All right, guys, welcome to episode five of the 1979 F-350 Resto Mod build. Now, when we last left off, I had taken the cab off of the vehicle and I was doing some work on the touch-up paint there, but the frame still had the bed on it and all of the suspension. So let's jump right into removing that bed. Guys, I'm in the bed here, getting ready to remove this. I wanted to show you a little something. The only bolt that you get to from the top is this front one. And if you notice, it has a Phillips head on it. And I knew this was gonna be a bit of a struggle, even though, as you can see, the rust isn't that bad and I was able to get this one off. The tool that I use is this impact driver. It's pretty simple. It's got different heads you can put on here. In this case, it's, I think, a number three Phillips. And then you strike it on the end, and I can't really show you with one hand, but basically, as it's impacting right here, it slightly twists the head. And so it's good for exactly something like this, something that is just totally rusted solid into place. Now I used a little penetrating lubricant, some uh, specifically PB Blaster on both of these, and I've been letting it sit for a little while. I'll film removing this one just so you guys can see the process. The other ones, they were all removed from the bottom. You see they slide into the square hole there and it holds them in on the bed and then that way you just need to get to them from the bottom. Once I have these eight removed, all I have to do is get the fuel filler necks the rubber hoses for the fuel fillers, there's two of them here, get those removed, and then, uh, let's see, lights to the tail lights, and that should be it. But first things first, let's get this last bolt out. Got it! All right, guys, it's time to split the bed from the frame. I'm 90% sure I got everything. There's eight bolts, two gas tanks, so you've got the filler neck, and then next to it, you've got the vent neck for each of them, and then in the rear, you've got the tail lights. That should be it. Can't think of anything else. Let's see if I got it all. I'm gonna lift it up, I'm gonna roll the frame away, I'm gonna put the cart underneath it, drop it down on the cart, then I'll be good to go. All right guys, now that we've got the bed off the frame, it's time to take a look at our fuel tank situation. Let me show you what I mean. Now obviously the factory fuel tanks are still in their factory location. What I've got sitting on top are the two tanks that I got from the 1995 F350. Now this rear tank, it looks like it will strap into the exact location. The fuel filler's in the same spot, the straps look to be in the same spot, and as far as I can tell, the measurements are the same. It does have to come in from the bottom, so it's a little bit of a tight squeeze from the top. That's the only issue that I've got. Over here, the 95 tank, the cross members, looks like there's two of them, and they were in a slightly different location than the three cross members that we have on the 79. So I do not think that the 95 tank will work on the front. Now that we know which tanks will fit in which location, we have to decide how we're gonna get the fuel to the EFI unit. And this can be a little bit tricky, so let me show you on paper what our options are. All right, so this is how the fuel system is currently. You've got the rear tank, you've got the front tank, and then right here you've got a little switching valve that's really just a plunger that will change between the two fuel lines and then it runs up to the carburetor. Let me show you how we'll have to run it. So this is the way I'm going to run it. You can see it's the same setup, it just has double the fuel lines and that's because we have to do the return. Right here, instead of using a valve with a small plunger to switch between the two tanks, I'm using the larger fuel assembly reservoir that was found on the 95 F350 that allows it to switch not only the two lines in, but also the two lines out. So basically, it's got the, the high pressure line and the return line that goes into it, and then it's got two separate pressure lines and return lines so that you can send the fuel back to the corresponding tanks. The other option that I decided against would be to do like an inline fuel pump right here and then maintain that old style plunger and then run a separate return line with a second old style valve and plunger to then return them back into the tanks. Now I don't think that would have been a good idea because the inline pump would have had really long suction lines and then when switching between the two tanks if you got any air bubbles in the system you could potentially have a low pressure uh, fuel situation. So this is what I'm gonna go with. The rear tank, the only thing I need to do is see if the modern style, the 95 one actually fits in the frame rail, so I'll do that next. The front tank, I'm going to have to modify to accept an in-tank style fuel pump because the new style tank doesn't fit. So let's jump on that right now and double check, make sure that rear uh, fuel tank will fit. The 
You guys remember the beginning of Spaceballs where it had that super ridiculously long ship? Look at the exhaust I removed. This thing is ridiculous. I wasn't sure if it was original or not. I didn't think that the mufflers were, but uh, after taking a look at these welds, geez louise, you know, sometimes I think my welds are not that beautiful, and they're not, but golly, this is garbage. All right guys, I wanna point out a nice little trick that somebody pointed out to me. Now, this is the parking brake line. What I would normally do to pop these out, you see there's three little tabs, one there, one there, and then one there. I would usually use a pair of 90 degrees pliers and then pry these in and then kind of push it out one way and then pry that last one in. Somebody mentioned that you can use an open end wrench and I'd never tried this before. Now in this case, it needed a 9 16 but you see how it fits around that just perfectly? So as I slide that on, those three little tabs squeeze in, and then you can just push it right out. I don't know if I can do it with one hand on this one. Let me get the GoPro set up so I can show you on this one. Way easier. Guys, I'm here at Dunbar Spring in beautiful downtown Phoenix, and I have some great news. Now, because those springs were in such good shape and they had almost no rust on them, all they're gonna do is put a longer main leaf and then retain all of the other springs. So we'll have the exact same spring rate, it's just gonna sit six inches higher. And that is wonderful news because it's gonna save us gobs of money. So I don't know how much it'll cost yet, but I will let you know as soon as I find out. Should be two days before it's done. Now, this is a little bit more stripped then I was thinking that this would go. I guess I knew it would get this stripped, but boy, always makes me a little bit nervous. I've done this a thousand times and I'm always scared that I'm gonna like forget how they go back together. I've got so many parts that have just come in for this truck, just boxes and boxes and boxes. I've got Rock Auto boxes, I've got Summit Racing boxes. I wish these companies sponsored me, but they don't, and you should if you're listening, because I love your stuff. I've gotta get these things opened up, but I don't wanna do that until I get this out of here. So, get the front suspension removed, get the frame out here with the forklift, get that cleaned and ready to go, start the process of getting these axles stripped and painted, and then, I guess I can get all these boxes opened up, make sure I've got all the parts that I need, and just kind of bask in the glory of a handful of new parts. There's just, I think it's $7,000 worth of new parts is what I've got now. And that is just gonna be awesome to lay out on the tables. All right, so let's get to it, axle time. All right guys, I'm getting ready to remove the front end and I wanna see if I can predict the future and tell you where I'm gonna have problems before it starts. I've got to remove the leaf springs. Those should be pretty simple. The shocks, again, simple. Brakes, those will be simple. Sway bars, simple. Steering, not so simple. 
Now the lift kit comes with a new pitman arm and a new drag link, and that is wonderful. And let me explain why. These are terrible to remove. They're just nasty. Luckily, the pitman arm, you can use a pitman arm puller and actually pull that off. But I'm anticipating that I'm gonna need to blowtorch this. And then to remove this drag link here, I can already tell you I'm gonna have to beat this to holy hell. Now the good news is because both of these pieces are being replaced, I don't need to remove this nut. And if I did, that would be mm, something I need to be very careful with because you don't actually strike the bolt downward to get it out. You have to actually strike the pitman arm on the side and you don't wanna strike this on the side where it puts all this stress on the shaft here. So the nice thing is there won't be any stress on that shaft because I'm gonna use the pitman arm puller there. And then this is a solid piece of, of cast steel here. So it's not gonna be a big deal to strike it here, here and here. And then I use a little penetrating lubricant and I bet you this will come off pretty easily but I bet you I'm gonna have a heck of a time with this pitman arm. Well, that's my predictions. Let's see how right we are. Let's just get to it. Well, as expected, the pitman arm is trying to ruin my life. So I'll see if I can get the camera set up a little better so you guys can see the struggle. Let's do it. All right, guys, so this is pretty simple, but just because something's simple doesn't mean it's easy. All we're trying to do is separate this piece, the pitman arm, from this, the steering shaft. And the problem is it's torqued on there pretty good and it's very old. Now, although it's not rusty, it's just on there real good. So, what I'm going to do is be striking it on the outside here to try and shock the connection between the splines to hopefully start to break it free. I've got a little PB blaster in there soaking, but as you can see, none of it's making it to the bottom. So, between here and up here, it's just totally sealed together. The next thing I'm going to do is get out the blowtorch and I'm going to torch it from here. I'm going to go around. I'm going to try and get the pitman arm as hot as possible while keeping the shaft as cool as possible. Now there is a little trick that I sometimes do on these where I'll blowtorch the outside and then when it's just insanely hot, I'll take a can of that uh, spare air, you know, for like cleaning keyboards and stuff. You flip it upside down because it's 134A, the same refrigerant that's in your cooling or your, your AC system flip it upside down, it sprays uh, Freon directly onto whatever the nozzle hits and it freezes things. So you basically turn it upside down, spray it into that little crack. You're gonna freeze the shaft, heat up the pitman arm, that'll separate the two. I don't know if I have any of that spare air lying around. Uh, so we'll start off with just the blowtorch, heat this thing up and I'll try my um, pulley again. I do have a pitman arm puller, but because this is so heavy duty, I don't have one big enough that'll fit over here. The one I have is just for like a normal human sized vehicle. Not one made for giants. This is map gas. It burns a little hotter than propane. And uh, so obviously as it heats up it's gonna expand. And it seems like we, you know even though we all know that uh, hot metal expands, it seems like it's not gonna expand enough, but it will. I mean, we're gonna get this thing off today one way or another. All right, here we go. Ah. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Dude, that was not that bad. That could have been a lot worse.
All right, now we get to go through the same song and dance for right here. So. Get this sucker off of there. Oh, boy, that makes me feel good. guys it's a fun day look at all these goodies this is too much to even do a fun little unboxing on I'm just gonna get all these parts spread out on the table and make sure that I have everything that I need a few of these boxes are from LMC and I believe they're the only one that was sending me a uh, shipment partial like uh, some of the stuff was uh, back ordered so I want to make sure that I have everything I need and know exactly what's back ordered but I think this is almost seven thousand dollars in parts I'm really excited to take a look at some of this stuff. So let's get unboxed. Now I already showed you the stuff in these boxes when they came in. That was the first stuff I got. Ooh, look at all this nice stuff. I'll tell you right now, you are crazy if you don't love looking at these new parts. There's just something about them before they go on the vehicle. Now these uh, headers here, I didn't know if these were the highest quality or not when I ordered them. I got them from, uh, let's see, who is it? Uh, DNA Motorsports, I think is the name. Look at these welds. They are really, oh, let me get a little light on it. They are really nice looking. I saw the <laughs> welds on the outside and I thought, ooh, I don't know about that, but the inside is where they're all fully TIG welded. Real nice looking, real clean. So I ended up getting uh, headers that are a two to one. So the headers cross over. I'll explain why when I do the exhaust a little bit later, but it ends up going to a three inch, three inch into the MagnaFlow, then a dual exhaust from there new alternator this is a kind of a cool little reservoir this is a dual reservoir this side is the coolant and then this side is uh, for the washer I thought it just kind of fit the style of the truck I'm not sure exactly what this is off of but I'll just build a custom bracket so I can mount this on the fender I think that'll look good inside the engine bay a new AC compressor belt tensioner rear disc brakes hoses gaskets water outlet uh, thermostat spark plugs Ooh, harmonic balancer is nice I didn't need to replace this but it'll it'll actually make a, a nice difference uh, for just keeping the motor really smooth when I put it together uh, fuel pump fuel filler hose uh, these are the front radiator supports and they're actually off a 68 to 72 Camaro and I'll show you when I put these on the frame how they fit the Fords because the ones for the bigger trucks are actually really difficult to find this is the 460 conversion motor mounts the Holly sniper EFI Ooh, I went with the black and then for the air filter this holly finned cleaner which I just think is real cool looking so whew, it's exciting it's exciting to see these parts but I got to get them on the vehicle got the water pump down there uh, brake lines and the energy suspension body mounts so I just wanted to show you guys these because this is probably the most exciting part of the build when you get all these little goodies all right guys, here's a look at the frame. Now the plan was, because this is a tight budget, that I was gonna just kinda Krylon coat the whole thing. You know, it was just gonna be a little backyard, coat of spray paint, give it the old rattle can, just enough to make sure that we've got it covered to protect it in the future. But I took off the fuel tanks because we got those new ones. I took off all the suspension in anticipation of putting on the lift kit. And then I was kinda left with an empty frame the only thing that I had to remove was the wiring and the wiring went the entire length and I could have just coated over it but then of course the colors would be gone and it'd be difficult to hook up later and I thought you know what it's 
almost naked. Let's get that last bit of wiring off and then let's shoot this with something a little bit nicer than rattle can. So I'm going to shoot this with Speedo Coats Hot Rod Black. It's a beautiful satin black. It is a, a two part, so you do have to add the hardener to it as well. So it'll make it a lot stronger. And because I'm gonna spray it out of my spray gun, it'll be a lot more uniform across. Now I'm not gonna film it because the sun's going down. I've got a very small window to paint this. I, I would love to put this in my paint booth, but I don't have the room right now, obviously. Let me stop talking, get this painted, and then show you what it looks like. Guys, this is how it's looking out in the sun, finally. Boy, what a difference. It looks fantastic. All right, guys, that's going to be it for the episode today. I was pushing really hard to have both of the axles painted and then have them underneath the frame and get that rolling on its new 37s, but sadly, I wasn't able to make it that far. Next week's episode should be more of the same. I'm hoping to have episode six of the F-350 build out for you guys. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Um, later today, actually, I will be posting my first ever product review. So if you've made it this far, maybe you'd like to watch that too. Otherwise, see you next week. Take care. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.